If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before moving on. In order to solve this question, what we need to do is to take this relatively complex circuit and boil it down into a simpler circuit. And when we do that, we typically work from the outside of the circuit inward. And by that, what we mean is we're going to start on the very outside of the circuit, and we're going to notice that we have two resistors that are in series with one another. Now, when two resistors are in series, we can combine them into what we call an equivalent resistor. And when we combine them, we have to add the individual resistances. So we're going to take this resistance and this resistance and add them together to make one equivalent resistor. And then we would end up with R plus five. We can't actually add these together, of course, because R is unknown. So you'll notice in the drawing that we've taken these two resistors and we've condensed them or combined them into one single resistor. And the resistance of that resistor is going to be this R plus five. We will next notice that there are three resistors in parallel with each other. There is this resistor here, this one here, and then the equivalent resistor that we just came up with here. Now, when resistors are in parallel, we cannot simply add their resistances. There's a different formula to follow. It's basically a reciprocal equation, so all the terms are underneath ones. And what we'll do is we'll just call this R1, this R2, and this R3 and we'll plug those respectively into the formula. Now our goal here is to solve this equation for REQ. That way we can combine the three resistors into one equivalent resistor. But that's a bit of a challenge in this particular case because of all the reciprocals. Maybe what we can do first is take these two terms and perhaps using our calculators add them together. The result is 1 over 30. To add these two fractions together, we're going to have to find a common denominator. Let's first wrap the denominators in parentheses. We'll have to multiply this denominator by 30, as well as the numerator. And then the denominator over here will have to be multiplied by r plus 5, as well as the numerator. Notice the denominator is now a common denominator. It was derived by multiplying the 30 times the r plus 5 in both denominators. We did it here, and then we also did it here. Now that the denominators are common, we can actually add the numerators together and write the result as a single fraction. And so we get 35 in the numerator, which came from the 5 plus 30. Now that we have one fraction on the left side and one fraction on the right side, we can do a little algebra trick where we flip the two fractions around. That way the REQ is going to come up to the numerator and then we'll have it solved for REQ. Make sure you flip this fraction as well. We now have the equivalent resistance of the three resistors that we were combining. Since we have that now, we can go ahead and redraw the circuit so that these three are combined into a single resistor. And then what we have left are two resistors that are in series with one another. And again, in series, just like we started with in the problem, we can add the two resistances together to get the equivalent resistance. And so here we have that single equivalent resistor. We've accomplished our goal of simplifying a relatively complex circuit all the way down to a relatively simple circuit. This is the total resistance of the circuit. The question notes that the total resistance of this circuit is 75 ohms. I think if you go back to the beginning of the video that the symbol here was V, that was a typo. That should not have been 75 volts. That should have been 75 ohms. So please take note of that. So again, this is the total resistance of the circuit. What we've put in blue brackets here is also the total resistance of the circuit. We're going to set those two equal to each other. Okay, so on the right side, we once again have the addition of two fractions. We can see that if we put the R over 1. So we're going to need to find a common denominator once again. So if we wrap this denominator in parentheses, we can see that we're going to have to multiply this denominator by r plus 35 and also the numerator by r plus 35. Keep that in parentheses because when you multiply, you have to distribute that r. So it's going to go to the 35 as well as to that r there to make r squared. And then once we have the common denominator, we can condense them into a single fraction. We'll go ahead and distribute the 30 to the r as well as the 5. We then have two like terms in the numerator, 35r and 30r, which can be added. 
we will next have to cross multiply. So we're going to put this over one, the 75. We'll wrap that in parentheses. We're gonna multiply the 75 to the r plus 35. You'll have to distribute it. So it becomes 75 r plus whatever 75 times 35 is. And then cross multiplying the other way is easier because you're just gonna multiply that quantity by one so it won't change. We're getting a quadratic equation here because of this r squared. So we're going to need to subtract 75 r from both sides of the equation as well as subtract 26, 25 from both sides of the equation to get it equal to zero. And there we have the result so far. This one turns out to be factorable. And if we factor it, we get the following two terms. If you have any questions about how that was obtained, please let me know in the comments. We can then set each factor equal to zero. And we're going to find that we get two solutions when we solve them. So the left solution becomes r equals 55 and the one on the right becomes r equals negative 45. We can't have a negative resistance so this solution is eliminated and that leaves this answer as the resistance that we are seeking and the unit will be in ohms. So the final answer is r is equal to 55 ohms. If your equation doesn't work out to be factorable you'd have to use the quadratic formula and if you have any questions about how that would work please let me know in the comments. But when you solve that quadratic formula, you should get the same two answers, 55 and negative 45. And then you'll reject the negative 45 to give you 55 ohms. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.